your school either has or is going to receive CO2 monitors that look like this and we will show you how to use these simple devices. Properly managed ventilation is linked with improved learning outcomes, reduced virus transmission and generally better indoor air quality and CO2 monitors like these can help you to better manage the ventilation in your classroom. The monitor itself is simple and while the exact style of monitor may vary, the key number we are most interested in is the concentration of CO2 measured in parts per million or PPM. Most monitors will also display other useful information such as temperature and humidity. The average CO2 levels in our atmosphere outdoors are around 400 ppm, so you should expect this number to read just above 400 first thing in the morning. But if you're in a big city, it may be a bit higher. Then, as more people occupy the room, this number will increase as the CO2 we all exhale accumulates in the room. But as more ventilation is supplied, for example by opening windows, the number should reduce as the fresh air replaces the stale air. It's possible to broadly identify when CO2 levels are high without the use of a monitor. When the room feels stuffy or the air smells stale, this is an indication that CO2 levels are high. The CO2 monitor, however, gives a much more precise value than our body's natural response. If CO2 levels are high, it means that the room is not well ventilated. Ideally, you should aim to keep CO2 levels below 800 ppm. When levels reach above 800 ppm, consider opening a window starting with high up windows or skylights first to provide some relieving fresh air to wake up the pupils. If levels continue to increase, consider opening another window and so on. With time, you will develop an intuition for what works for your classroom to consistently keep levels low. Every room is different and some are more difficult to ventilate than others. The challenge of adequate ventilation becomes even more apparent in winter when ventilation may need to be balanced against a comfortable temperature so you should seek to find a balance between a comfortable temperature and adequate ventilation. Remember, at levels above 800 ppm, try to take actions to increase the supply of fresh air by opening windows, and if, even with your best efforts, the levels are regularly above 1500 ppm, actions from the school management teams should be taken to provide long-term solutions to improve the ventilation. This might include unsealing permanently sealed windows, removing large objects in front of windows, or providing passive air grills. But remember, there is no inherent risk from CO2 itself and the room can continue to be used if appropriate. The lowest CO2 levels that can be achieved are the background levels in our atmosphere. And in the context of ventilation, low CO2 levels near outdoor levels are good news. Especially if the weather is warm, there is no problem with lots of ventilation and low CO2 levels. However, in colder weather, low CO2 levels could mean that you are leaning too far towards ventilation at the expense of a comfortable temperature. Therefore, if CO2 levels are much below 800 ppm, consider closing some windows to increase the temperature if required. In terms of where to position your monitor, it is of course not practical to keep an eye on the monitor at all times, but given that CO2 and temperature levels can impact learning and health outcomes, it's a good idea to keep the monitor within peripheral vision and glance at the monitor at convenient times, such as when entering a room, after delivering a starter activity, while pupils are getting on with written work, and at the end of lessons. When sitting up for the first time, you will need to select the location so that you can easily see the monitor, but it doesn't get in the way. The monitor can be stuck on a wall near your desk at visible height, or simply put on your teaching desk. Just make sure the monitor is not too close to drafts from any windows or doors. The CO2 monitor is an important tool to give you the information to better manage ventilation in the classroom, where high CO2 levels indicate more ventilation is needed. The next two videos will go into more detail about how CO2 levels are linked to virus transmission and learning outcomes.